Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. Give double honors to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalawan Wahabla Baki or Shoya Sharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson, Baha'u Chachodah Shah Amaf and Holy Spirit of truth and the topic of this lesson is um going in on and standing boldly and stiffly for the lord's namesake as it says in the book of second Ezra, the second chapter man all right uh also in the apocrypha it says I, I will not be ashamed to defend a friend so that's what we're gonna do man we're gonna stand boldly and stiffly for the lord's name we're gonna defend the gospel we're gonna defend the truth man because you got this group called the iuic saying that you can call the lord whatever you want at one point they said you could call the lord yo play yogurt and then this man which we're gonna play the video this member of the iuic the man that's gonna be speaking he said you could call the lord jalapeno pepper man that's taking the lord's name in vain okay that's making the lord's name worthless all right and the lord is going to judge you niggas for that man the lord is going to judge you and that's a sign that you are not a part of the elect that you are not a part of the chosen okay in the book of sirach the uh, 17 chapter the 10th verse it says that the elect shall play shall praise the uh holy name of the lord man the elect shall praise the holy name of the heavenly father. So if you're speaking against the holy name of the heavenly father and the name of his only begotten son, that shows you that you're not a part of the elect, man. In the book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 10th verse, it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower of defense. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So when all hell breaks out loose, call upon jalapeno pepper and see if you get saved, man. Call upon them, yo play yoga and see if you get uh, saved. Call upon Jesus Christ and see what the fuck happens to you, man. All right. Those names don't hold no weight. Those names don't mean shit. OK. In the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse, it says that there is no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved. All right. So that shows you that the name was given to men. All right. And you have to have that name to be saved. You have to call upon that name to be safe from the troubles that's to come. All right. But without further ado, I'm going to play the clip and we're going to hop into some more precepts. No. Not kill, not steal, not commit adultery, not uh, and even the doing the work on Sabbath and all of that. Can I? I'm asking you specifically and straightforward, just as plain as day. What do you do with Yeshua? Because if you guys, if he is not the way that everybody's got to be, because that's what we're supposed to be. Because I'm called to teach the lost sheep of the house of Israel. God told me this years ago to go not into any other. It's, it, okay. 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 Yes. Now, this this woman, she's going off. She said Yeshua. That's not the true name of the Messiah. His true name is Yahweh Shai. Yeshua is Yiddish. All right. Uh, and also, she said that she's set up to teach. Paul said what? He said, I suffer not a woman to teach. Okay. Uh, 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 and she quoted a scripture that she's what only sent to the house of Israel. Don't go into uh, any of the cities of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Enter ye not. All right, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Lord, Yahweh Shai, he was saying that to his disciples and all his disciples was men. In the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, it says what? That the tabernacle of the Lord is with men. I believe it's in Proverbs and Ezekiel. It says that the voice is to the sons of men. All right. But she is going to cut him. All right. She's going to uh, um, uh, say that what the name of the Lord is important and he's going to downplay it. So let's continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But let me say, I'm still asking you the question. What do you do with Yeshua, who they taught us was Christ? They taught us his name was Jesus Christ. What do you do with him? Look, we can say jalapeno pepper. We call him whatever you want. Right? But if you're not doing his will, you're not going to get the kingdom. You hear how stupid this guy sounds? He said, you can call the most high. Jalapeno pepper. You can call the only begotten son jalapeno pepper. Don't matter what you call him. Let's play that back, man. Oh, we can say jalapeno pepper. We call him whatever you want. Right? But if you're not doing his will, you're not going to get the king. Right? Hang on. I'm asking. You could call him whatever you want, right? Now, this is a group that's all about the law. All right. Every time a woman comes up with pants, hey, sis. You're supposed to be wearing a dress, all right? Uh, uh, but what's also in the law is what? That you should not take the Lord's name in vain. Let's grab that. you all about the law, but you breaking one of the first laws that was given. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20. 
in verse 7. All right, it's Exodus 20 and 7. It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord Yahweh, thy power in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. All right, the Lord is going to hold you 100% accountable, man, for making, for making his name vain. All right, for taking his name in vain, for saying you can call him whatever you want. That's what vain means. All right, making the Lord's name worthless, making it meaningless. OK, saying it doesn't matter what you call him. That's making the Lord's name in vain. And he said that he's not going to hold you guiltless. In fact, you are an enemy of the Lord speaking the things that you are saying. Let's get the proof on that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 19. Surely that will say like it. Surely that will slay the wicked. And this dude is the wicked man. All right. And he's going to be slain lest he repent. OK. And even if he do repent, the heavenly father don't have to forgive him, man. He said he'll have mercy on who he'll have mercy on. It says, surely thou will, will slay the wicked, O Yahweh. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. So this dude is an enemy of the Heavenly Father. Why? Because he took his name in vain. You say you can call the Lord Yo Play Yogurt? You say you can call the Lord Jalapeno Pepper? That's taking the Lord's name in vain. That's speaking against him wickedly. Therefore, you are an, en you are an enemy. And what Yahweh should I say about his enemies in the book of Luke 19 and 27? He said, those my enemies, which would not want, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them for before me. All right. So the Lord is going to start slaughtering niggas that's following after this same wicked ass doctrine. Again, lest ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, as the Lord said in Luke 13 and 3. Verse 21, it says, do not I hate them? O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? So the Lord, so King David, who is a man after the Most High's heart, as the scriptures say in the book of Acts 13, all right, he said, I hate a man that would take your name in vain. Let's read the next verse, verse 22. It says, I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies, all right? So you count it as an enemy. OK, in the eyes, uh, 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 in our eyes and more importantly, in the eyes of the Lord, man, you're an enemy to the house of David. This is David speaking. This, this is David's words. All right. In the book of Psalms 139. This is his word. So this you're an enemy to the house of David. More importantly, you're an enemy to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the only begotten son. It's like Yahweh is the true name of the heavenly father. And Yahweh Shai is the true name of his only begotten son. Why would he not give us his name? All right. His name is how we're going to be saved. Again, that Acts 4 and 12. Let me read it straight out the book. I'm going to read it straight out the book. This is the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven, on the earth, right? Given among men. So this name is given to us. Right. Whereby we must be saved. There's no other name whereby we must be saved. All right. So call upon jalapeno pepper. Call upon them. Uh, 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 yo play over. Call upon Jesus Christ. Those are not the. Those are not names that uh, uh, you can be saved off of, man. All right. Calling upon those names is going to be your destruction. OK. This is the book of Psalms chapter 54. Just to back that up. This is Psalm chapter 54 and verse one. It says, save me. O Yahweh, by thy name and judge me by thy strength. All right. So we're going to be saved by the name of the Lord. We're going to be saved by the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we're going to be saved by the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Those names are important. You can't just say you can call him whatever you want. You, we don't have the name. It doesn't matter what you call him. Hey, the Lord, the Lord. Fucked up a a, a, a a heathen for um for for talking a smack against his name for blaspheming his name and we gonna get that too. Let me get another precept, and then we'll move on. This is the book of um Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter thirteen. These these aren't in the IUIC um uh, these aren't in the IUIC precept packages. All right, he's gonna bring out a scripture later on in Psalms one thirty eight. We can go into that too. All right. That's a that's that's a part of their uh preset package, man. Cause we dealt out here in GMS Des Moines a few years ago, we dealt with a nigga in IUIC, and that's this precept, the same precept he brought out, man. 
right? And any other time that they speaking on this topic, they bring that that only precept out to say that the name of the Lord doesn't matter, all right? To try to uh, 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 substantiate saying that you can call him whatever you want. It doesn't matter as long as you keep in his laws. You can't even keep all his laws. And a part of keeping his laws is not taking his name in vain. You niggas don't read, man. All right? These niggas don't read for themselves. They take their little preset package, their little camp package, and their damn fucking purple polo, all right? And think that they're a prophet, man. The Lord's going to start riding on, on all his enemies, man. All right? He's going to start riding on Israelites that, 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 that's not set up to teach, man. All right? But act like they're the prophets. But act like they're sent from the Heavenly Father. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 13, and verse 14. It says, Love the Lord all thy life. And call upon him for thy salvation. You have to call upon the name of the Lord for salvation. Okay? This is the importance of the name. If the name wasn't important, why would Moses, before he went to the Israelites, why did he ask the Lord, I need to know your name? Alright? And what did the Heavenly Father tell him? He said, well, I'll grab that. Alright? I'll grab that also. Is the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3 and verse, uh, let's start at verse 13. It says, And Moses said unto, uh, unto Yahweh, Behold, when I come unto the, I'm going to read it verbatim. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them the power of your, Eslaki, the God of your fathers, have sent me unto you, and they shall say, say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? All right. So that shows you that the name is important. So verse 14 this is the Lord's response. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus say, thus, it's like it, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. So the Lord was referring to himself. All right. When he said, I am that I am. He said, this is what you shall say to the uh, uh, to the children of Israel. I am has sent you. Now, imagine if Moses went to the children of Israel and, and, and they ask him, yeah, who sent you, Moses? He said, I am sent me. They'll be thinking that he's talking about himself. All right. So that's why the next verse is where uh, uh, that's why the next verse says what it says. Verse 15, it says, and God said, moreover. Now, that word no, moreover goes to the Hebrew word Iwad which means in continuance, yet besides, there is more to say. Look it up, all right? Look up the definition. It says, and God said, moreover, there's more to say in continuance, right? Yet, says, moreover, unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, when you go into the Hebrew, where it says "Lord" in all caps, it is it have the uh it have the Lord's true name. It have Yahweh there, all right, which means He is, He exists, He to be. Okay, yeah, that's in the Hebrew. All right, it says uh, the Lord God, which it really it should say Yahweh. God of your fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, the power of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. So the name didn't change, man. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Meaning what? We would have his name. And especially in these last days, man. All right. It says that in the... Um, Let's see. There's another. There's another one part of the preset package that they don't that they don't know how to break down. It's the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter three and verse nine. It says, "For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call the pure language is the Lashawan Kodash." All right, and 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 we believe that that's the pure language. We believe that that was restored unto us in in these last days, as the prophecy says it would be. Okay, and we're gonna and this is this is what we're this is what we're reading. <laughs> it says, "For then will I turn." All right, which uh, which when you go into that word turn, it's the uh, it's the Hebrew word hapak, which means to restore. All right, so that means he's gonna give it back to us. The same name. It says, "This is my name forever." So he restored it to us. 
right? It says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. This is what the prophecy says, that the Lord would give us our language back so that what? So that we can call upon his holy name. Now let's jump down to verse 12. All right. It says, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. All right. So that shows you because they'll say, oh, we're not going to get the name until the kingdom. Well, this scripture right, set, right here says that he will leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. That's us right now. We're the ones that's afflicted. We're the ones that's poor. That's why you got niggas marching up and down the streets of the United States begging for some damn mercy, begging for some damn justice. All right pleading to the so-called white man and trying to make them realize that their fucking black life matters, man. All right. Our people is afflicted and our people is poor. Okay. It says, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. So that's showing you that we would have his name on this side in the land of our captivity. I'll grab that precept also. All right. I wish I can um, upload that video. All right. Of the IUIC. He's bringing out these same, the same. <laughs> I know it's a precept package, bro. All right. He's bringing out the same points that this dude is bringing out. All right. But that was on the old channel that that got deleted. But it's all good. All right. That's the point of constantly doing these lessons. So let's go from there to the book of Baruch, the second chapter. Uh, this is Baruch chapter two and verse 30. It says, for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Right. And that's where we are right now. We're in the land of our captivity. All right. And we're what? We're coming back into the remembrance of who we are. All right. And a part of us coming back to the remembrance of who we are is us coming back to the remembrance of who our power is, who our God is. Verse 31, it says, and shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them in heart and ears to to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivities. So like in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. OK, so that shows you right there that we will have the name of the Lord here in our captivity. He has given us that name. He has restored that name onto us. Why? So we can call upon it for salvation like the previous scriptures that we went into. All right. So I want to get another precept. I will worship for the your pepper. We call it whatever you want. Right? Yeah. Jesus Christ, what do you do with him? Look, we can say Jalapeno pepper, we call it whatever you want. Yeah. Right? But if you're not doing this dude's a fucking man, I'm gonna be honest, man. This whole camp is 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 zombies, man. He said we could we could call him jalapeno pepper. We can call him whatever you want. What's the niggas in the back saying? Preach! Bring it out. You hear what he just said, man? The most high power, the creator of all things. This dude said you can call him jalapeno pepper. You could call him whatever you want. You niggas is cheering him on. Zombies, man. Zombies. Okay, so I'm going to get a preset because that's blasphemy. Let's see what happens to niggas that blaspheme, the, the, that blaspheme the true name of the Lord. This is Leviticus chapter 24 and 10. It says, and the son of and the son of the Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman, a woman a, and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. So this nigga was a heathen, all right? This nigga was an Egyptian with an Israelite mother. Verse 11, it says, And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shilohamith, the daughter of Debri, the son of Slaki of the tribe of Dan. All right, so back in Slaki, let me read on. It says, And they put him in ward, that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spake on. So, so they, they pretty much arrested him. They, they had him. Uh, they had him detained. All right. For lack of better words. All right. And then they went to inquire the Lord. What are we going to do? To, what are we going to do to this nigga? All right. What you want us to do to this man? It says. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses saying. Bring forth him that have cursed without the camp. And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. And let all the congregation stone him. You went to God in a way with that in the ancient days, man. All right. You and all those men behind you screaming, that's right. Bring it out. Jalapeno pepper. In the ancient days, 
Everybody would like, lay hands on you. Everybody would start picking up rocks and throwing it at your ass, man. All right? But best believe judgment worse than that is going to come. Lest ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. It says, And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his power shall bear his sin. And that's what you're doing, man. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord Yahweh, he shall surely be put to death. Surely be put to death. All right? And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall he shall be put to death. All right? Death. That's the judgment, man. That's in the law, right? We read in Leviticus. You want to talk about the law, law, law? This is in the law. Where if you blaspheme the name of the Lord, you will be put to death. You will be stoned. That's that's written in the law that, that y'all uphold so highly. Which we are supposed to keep the law to the best of our ability. But like the woman said, we can't keep all of them. Is, is all your clothes that you got on one fabric? They don't even keep the Sabbath correctly. But hey, what if you have to work on the Sabbath? We can't keep all the laws in the land of this cap in the land of our captivity, man. And the scriptures say if you break one of the laws, you break all of them. You putting your woman out on her menstrual? You you not you. There's no possible way we can keep the laws perfectly, okay? That's why we need Yahweh Shai. Okay, so let's continue. Point is will. You're not going to get the kingdom. Hang on. I'm going to ask you a question. I will worship for the holy temple. Listen up, sis. Humble down. Everybody. The one this is Christ right here. And verse 30. And verse 2. Uh -huh. I will worship for the holy temple. Listen up. 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 Right, so where they at right now? They're in Psalms chapter um, one thirty eight, right? And uh, and even in that, even in that, they they cut. All right, and they say, "Oh, you yeah, see, so you getting excited?" It clearly said, "Praise the Lord's name." You just said you could call him whatever you want. That's not praising the Lord's name. You just said you could call him jalapeno pepper. That's not praising the Lord's name. You cut yourself with a scripture that you brought out. You niggas is not equipped. All right, to teach the scriptures. You niggas is not ready to teach the Bible, man. This is the book of Psalms 138 and verse 1. It says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward his, uh, I, will, like it, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy, uh, thy name. Now, when you go into the word above, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Psalms 138. And this is the same group that say you don't got to go into the Hebrew. You ain't got to go into the meaning. You ain't got to go to the etymology of the words. That's why y'all don't know nothing. Y'all don't know nothing. Y'all don't know what y'all need to know, man. All right? So I want to get that word uh, above, right? It says, um, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So I click on the word above. All we're doing is going into the word above. Okay. And that particular scripture, it won't give me the definition of that word. So we have to click on the word, go to another scripture where it has that same word in it to uh, access that definition now. So it's Genesis 1 and 7. We're just going into the word above, which is the Hebrew word al, all right? The first character is an I. The second character is a la. Together it's al. It means what? And this is the word for above. Upon, on the ground of, according to. So uh, let's deal with the first one. Upon, all right? Which is a compound word, up on. 
So what is the Lord saying? He's putting his word on his name. Just like what? What you hear Jake saying in the hood? Oh, my mama. Nigga, oh, my daddy. Nigga, oh, my grandma. <laughs> right? Nigga, that's on me. That's, that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying that's on me. My word is on me. Right? It says according to, on account of, on behalf of, concerning. Okay? So you see the rest upon, on the ground of, on the basis of, on account of, because of, thereof. So it's not just because he said that. That's not saying that his name is irrelevant. Because there's a plethora, all right? Hundreds of scriptures saying that the Lord's name is important. That the Lord's name is to be praised. That the Lord's name is to be glorified. That the Lord's name is to be called upon for salvation. There's, there's hundreds of scriptures, man, going into that. They bring out this one scripture which they don't have the, the understanding of and say, yeah, see, you can call him your play yogurt. You can call him whatever the hell you want. Incorrect. All right. So let's get another precept to show you that the Lord, what? He put his name. All right. He, or he, he put his word on his name. Uh, What is it? Hebrews. Let me let me find it in my. uh. Bible Kusha, bear with me. Because I had it pulled up in my, uh, on my other phone. I'll just look it up again. Again, Bible Kusha, give me one second. This is the book of Hebrews. I'm gonna pause it real fast. All right, so like I got it right here. This Hebrews chapter six and verse sixteen. It says, "For men verily swear by the gr uh." Let me see. I want to start up. I'm going to start at verse 13. This is Hebrews 6 and 13. It says, For when Yahweh made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. That's like what? Putting, putting your word on your name. Putting your word upon your name. Okay? It says, Saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured to obtain the promise. For men verily swear by the greater. Men swear by the greater. That's why you have niggas in the hood, man. That's on, that's on Tukey Williams, right? Because that, that nigga's above them, right? Uh, uh, that's on Larry Hoover. Or that's on my great granny, right? They're swearing on people above them. You even got these wicked niggas saying now that's on, or even want to say it, but that, that's they say that's on or uh, on God, right? You'll hear niggas saying that now. They swear by someone above them. The Lord, there's no one above the Lord. So he said, "What? That my word is on my name." It says for men. That's not xing out his name because in the same chapter it says, "I'll praise the Lord's name." All right. So it says, "For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife." All right. So that's that point. <coughs> Psalms chapter 119 and verse 1, 142. 142. Bring it out. Thy righteousness is the everlasting righteousness. Uh -huh. And thy law. And thy what? And thy law uh -huh. is the truth. The laws of God is the truth. That's right. His name is called. Again, we read in Exodus, the 20th chapter. <laughs> it started off with saying what? Don't take the Lord's name in vain. We read in Leviticus. What happened to a man that blasphemed the Lord's name? He was put to death. He was stoned. This is in the law that you're upholding, right? That you're that that you're claiming is how we're supposed to be saved. The word of God. Whoa, his name is what? The word of God. Bro, like you said, he has many names. Right. So why are you stuck on that? This dude doesn't know what he's talking about. Like you said, he has many names. Dot, dot, dot. So why are you stuck on that? The, the description doesn't say he has many titles. Right? He has many titles. That's a fact. But he has one name. Okay? And I'll get that. This is the book of 
Zechariah chapter 9 and verse uh so like is Zechariah this is Zephaniah Right, this is Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 9. It says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. His name one. Okay? So he doesn't have many names. There's another cut. So you're not fit to teach, man. Okay? You need to get your refund on the priesthood package, and you need to learn from the men of Great Millstone. Because you're not learning the truth in IUIC. All right, the, the, the doctrine that they're teaching is not going to get you saved. The scriptures talk about the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. When you go into that word, word, it, it means doctrine, synonymous with doctrine. So there's a doctrine that's being preached that's able to save your souls. And preaching, you can call the Lord, you'll play yogurt or, or whatever. That's not, that's going to lead you to death. All right. Because if you have a name, whatever your name is, and your child or your co-worker needs something from you, and they say, hey, Derek, hey, Derek, and they keep calling Derek, and, you know, the first time you may answer, but the second time, a, a, the name, we know that a name signifies the value and worth of who that person is. It is in his name. We were told to address the Father in his name. That's all I'm asking you. That's all I'm asking you. She didn't understand it right now. So she, so she just cut his ass, man. <laughs> you have a name. You want me to call you out? You want me to call you jalapeno pepper? Are you going to answer to that? <laughs> Is you going to answer the holla? If if you down the street and someone you hear someone down the street calling you, and they keep screaming jalapeno pepper, you go say, yeah, what's up? No, cause that's not your name. So how much more the heavenly Father, Yahweh? You calling upon a, a, a different name? He's not going to answer to that. He's not going to come save you. The Lord's name is Yahweh Shai. If you calling him Jesus, he's not going to come answer. He's not going to answer to that. Or, or when you have a substitute teacher and, and she's giving um, roll call, right? Attendance. She's giving attendance and she call, you, she call you out your name. What do you do? You, you correct it instantly, man. Now, this is how you pronounce it. This is how you say it. So how much more the Heavenly Father created of all things? How much more is only begotten son, second in command, sitting on the right, the right hand of the heavenly father. All right. So that's it for that, man. Lord willing, I was that if I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Ha'chadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, in the name of the heavenly father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, in the name of his only begotten son, our Lord and our Savior, Ha'chadash. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. double honors to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, that rule well. Shalom, Wahabla, Baki, Yashurali, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom, Makim. Brothers, keep on pushing. Stay diligent. Stay faithful. Continue to stand boldly and stiffly for the name for the name of the Lord. Salvation draweth nigh, and redemption is nearer than we believe. Shalom.